Hello my fellow cigar smokers and welcome to Smokers Pod and another Night Owl. That is my friends the Andalusian Bull by La Flor Dominicana. We had this stick last year and I was kind of disappointed to be honest uh, so this little friend here was resting in my humidor for and I don't know nine months around that and I will give it another try to see um, if I was just not patient enough the last time uh, and maybe this one will be better we'll check it out Working here with my uh, cigar pocket knife. In the meanwhile, I can use that little knife a little bit better. Still not my my favorite way uh, cutting cigars, but it's a fun thing to do. Okay, so Andalusian Bull by La Flor Dominicana, that stick was the Cigar of the Year by Cigar Aficionado in 2016. And I mean since then the cigar is like more myth than a fact. Uh, If you're if you're like asking like ten people, uh, nine of them never smoked one, and the one who smoked it just saying it's a fabulous cigar because cigar aficionado said it's a it's a great cigar. But as I said, guys, last time I was smoking this one, um, didn't like it. But I remember back then it was a present given to me by a friend of mine and I mean I was smoking it like instantly and maybe that was like because back then I was so happy to get one and I was just smoking it you know and after the review and everything I thought oh man Andy maybe it would have been a good idea to just wait a little bit longer uh, uh, be patient leave it in Jumi door but back then man, it wasn't possible <laughs> you know how it is but you know I'm trying to be fair and uh, giving it another chance because really there are a couple of people out there uh, where I know as a fact that they know what they're talking about. And you know how it is sometimes you just have this one bad cigar, right? And all the others they are good or mostly good. Draws, okay. Almost no pepper. In the beginning it's hard to describe. It has something creamy dessert like. Like a, don't know man, like a creme brulee or something like this. something sweet combined with something creamy not bad not bad at all and guys that's the weed we told all right <sighs> 64 ring gauge 6.5 inches long quite a quite a monster
you probably already saw it. Last week, absolutely no output from my side. No cigar talk, no review. My last video was the last night owl, a week ago. Um, and now another night owl. Guys, don't worry, everything's okay. Also, made no Instagram postings, nothing. Um, and the reason for that was uh, mainly two things. A, it was my youngest daughter's birthday. And we had like two events. Um, her birthday was uh, Wednesday last week um, so we had a little family gathering and but I mean really just her sister uh, so my oldest daughter my wife my, my mother um, and you know just hanging out a little bit together and we tried to like do whatever the birthday kit my youngest daughter wants to do so was kind of uh, into that and a couple of days before that um, a friend of my oldest daughter uh, passed away well actually passed away like three weeks ago but um, the funeral service uh, was a couple of days ago uh, so I had to kind of provide um, support for my oldest daughter you know just being around and um, whenever possible uh, like have a chat about that you know because that was actually the first time in her life that somebody she knew very well like passed away and we all know when you're getting older people you know like will die because they're old like your your grandparents or whatever you know or friends neighbors whatever you know that that happens we know that's part of life but I mean she's like 17 years old and so it was the first time and first time is always hard you know especially I mean this boy he was even a, a year younger than my daughter and he had an overdose Still nobody knows if it was like an accident or suicide. We don't know. But um, I met him a couple of times. And always had the impression that he was somehow lost, you know. I still remember we were sitting one time. Uh, having uh, we had like dinner together and you know he was just sitting there and he had a hoodie and he had uh, uh, the hood over his hat you know and usually we have like okay I'm saying like we have rules that's a little bit too hard but you know we have certain things that that you do when you're eating dinner or not you know for example uh, no mobile phones you know and you don't sit at the table like this and putting the fork in your mouth just the regular stuff you know and of course nobody has his hat, his hat on or the hood over but this time I mean he was there and he was sitting there and I had the impression that was like his his armor you know so it was okay for me and as I said man it's you he was looking at him and he was he was just kind of lost 
you know. I'm pretty sure he never found his position in life, you know. Anyways, so it was kind of echoing into the week, you know. So instead of doing like cigar reviews and cigar talks, I was I was I was just trying to be around, you know. Uh, being there, being approachable, that in case, like she needs to talk, um, that it's obvious that I'm here, you know. I'm like, I'm not talking with you about it if you don't want to, but if you want to talk about it, I'm here. Uh, and just listening, you know. And I think that was important. Pairing my Andalusian bull with this time no whiskey, uh, I brought a beer, and that is the Robusto Six. Actually, has nothing to do with the <laughs> Robusto we, Robusto Vitola. Actually, I don't know why they choose that name. Um, cheers, my friends. Beer. Um, good friend of mine, Stefan, gave it to me, like the the guy who was running the David of flagship store, and he gave it to me. Um, I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or when I was buying the Sino Nicaragua. And remember when you watched the review I was talking, they're giving you, together with when you're buying the cigar, they're giving you like a, a flyer, uh, like a brochure, with some information that is saying, well, you know, pair it with a, with a, with a special kind of beer, it goes very good along. Uh, and so he gave that beer to me <laughs> and said, go give it a try. Oh, my nose. Uh, you know that when you're about to, uh, it's not coming. Anyways, um, so uh, since then I had it in my fridge, and I think now I saw it now. Good time, give it a try. It's a good beer. Has a little bit of a um, um, the taste is a little bit like a root beer, you know, kind of sweet with some spice or so. So I thought it's a good pairing. So, yeah, basically that's it about last week, you know, birthday, oh, I forgot my youngest uh, daughter's birthday, we, I said we had like two events, the first one was like on Wednesday, when actually her, it was her birthday, and then uh, like two or three days later, uh, she was actually celebrating her birthday with her friends, you know, uh, so we had like, um, she invited like only three friends and they had a sleepover party and um, everything was cool, you know. And it was, I think it was also an important event because I'm telling you guys, for like, I think Wednesday or Thursday, the weather started to being like really good, you know. Since then I'm just running around with a t-shirt and shorts, you know weather is very good and you know her birthday party was like I just I have one image like that I remember and so my youngest daughter and her friends were out in the garden and they were just joking around you know like they were making a couple of they're, they're all they're like into that TikTok thing you know whatever and my dad had a lot of fun making videos, running around in the garden and uh, laughing, having fun. And I was just sitting there and like watching. And it was, I had a smile on my face, you know. 
it was just good to see that um, uh, that like they had fun they had just fun you know she had a very long list of things uh, that she like wished uh, like a wish list that she all the things that she wants to have and I mean like 90% of that stuff was was all about Harry Potter you know um, a scarf uh, like a magic wand and um, a couple of things you know and just one thing that was uh, like <clears throat> uh, that was like falling out of that pattern and okay here's the background last year um, she uh, I gave her an a used notebook you know because I thought it was about time she's as I said 15 right uh, so last year she was 14 and but she was like it was a very good notebook you know but I thought it's like good enough for the stuff she needs to do or wants to do but turned out that it wasn't such a good thing so she said oh man well daddy can I have like I want to have a MacBook because she sees me always running around with my Apple stuff you know uh, and so she she was putting a MacBook uh, on her list and I wasn't buying exactly that MacBook but I was like a refurbished one a MacBook Air from 2017 with like in good shape you know so she got that and very happy you know uh, besides playing in the garden around she was uh, sitting with her friends in her room opened the MacBook and just watching Netflix Amazon Prime or YouTube whatever so it was it was a good thing uh, I think she liked it Taste of the cigar is good, but see the burn. Mm, uh, wavy, but still okay. Let's see. Got a care package from my good friend Daniel Ravenelli, 505 Cigar Review Show. Was in here, well, still opened. Uh, actually, I wanted to show it, but <laughs> oh, the preparation wasn't so good. But man, it was full of like Nomad and Astro Science cigars because he remembered that I like always talking about Nomad and Astro Science cigars because they're not available in Germany and I'm watching reviews uh, done by him or by uh, Ranch uh, Hard and Cigars and I'm always saying man the one I had was actually sent to me by Ranch last year that was the Nomad Signature and that was a fantastic cigar you know and I like I just like to prank you know I think they have good ideas and everything so Daniel man you were sending me like I don't know 10 12 cigars all excellent stuff guys that was I was really I was opening that package and I was feeling really really grateful you know so at this point thanks a lot buddy really appreciate the cigars and uh, your generosity and I will enjoy every single cigar of it and most probably 
I will put out a review of uh, one or two of them. Uh, at those things a lot. All I can say, really, and that's like, you know, the cool story about that is. like I don't know two months ago or so I was just sending me cigars you know because I just like to sending things out you know and we uh, we like we're friends and I thought okay here are a couple of cigars that I know that are kinda hard to get in in the States so I was just chipping to them you know and you know it's not like it's not a marketing gimmick or so so like I'm sending you cigars and you putting it out on your channel and promote my channel. It's not nothing about that, you know. It's just like what friends do, you know. Sending over cigars, sending stuff you like and you think it's maybe that he can enjoy it too, you know. And of course I, I'm I'm asking for nothing in return, you know, because it's like a gift. So but without hesitation or asking he was sending back cigars, you know. And that's just that's the that's the cool thing about that cigar culture, cigar community. We always taking care of each other, and really that's what I like about that whole thing. And that gives you also like a little bit of strength and that extra boost of passion to do the things you do. You know, uh, just good to see. It's just good to see. I have to tell you a little bit about my Friday last week. That was a phenomenal day. Because, you know guys, here in Germany we're still in the Corona lockdown. I mean, actually since March, April last year or so. We had one little interruption, but basically for over a year now. I don't want I don't want to say like everything is closed you know but very harsh restrictions most shops were closed restaurants were closed just allowed to pick up and all that I don't want to talk about it you know because it's um I'm just tired of talking about that but what I wanted to say is like for a couple of weeks now uh, numbers are decreasing so basically last week Friday uh, a lot of the restrictions were like ceased, you know, so the restaurants were allowed to open outside again, not inside, it would probably come next week or the week after that, uh, and uh, a lot of shops were allowed to open again and all that kind of stuff, you know, things are opening up again. So, and Friday was like the first day. So, and Fridays, in the past were always my time going to the farmer's market and I'm always going to like to the same place and eating uh, um, like a half chicken with french fries. And for months now I was not able to do that at the farmer's market, I was there a couple of times take it for like take away you know but it's not the same thing so farmers market will open again I was going to that place ordering like my chicken my french fries and I was eating there at the farmers market that sounds silly now but it's like was the first time that like 
something normal happened again. Um, so <laughs> that was just a great feeling. Going to the farmer's market, eating my half chicken, and after that, walking around downtown a little bit and going to my favorite cafe, just sitting there, ordering my espresso. I was ordering the same thing over there. Uh, double espresso, a bitter lemon, um, and sometimes if a New York cheesecake. So that was my was my thing, you know. So Friday, after the farmer smoking, going to the cafe, double espresso, bitter lemon, New York cheesecake. And guys, I was just like sitting there, enjoying my espresso, enjoying my bitter lemon. And eating my New York cheesecake and I was just like I was a happy puppy you know just sitting there enjoying normal things you know the weather was nice and it was, it was all good it was all good oh that was a fantastic day really and I enjoyed it to the fullest you know and I know the owner of the shop very good it's like a couple and so uh, the lady was uh, uh, she was taking like the order you know and man she was just like standing there and she still knew uh, what I wanted to order you know and she said and she said something like man Andy I cannot tell you how long I've waited to get I can't take that order again and we left that was a good feeling. So, but next week, so actually when you're watching that, this week will be back to normal, smoker spot wise. Wednesday, we're coming out with a cigar talk. Friday a cigar review, and I'm uh, I, you know, I explained why like last week nothing happened, and I was feeling kind of bad not not putting my stuff out as usual, you know, and at the same time I was like feeling that I missed it because it 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 developed into like. Uh, like a routine, you know, the things, it's, it's like a routine doing the smoker spot stuff, you know, and why? Because I love it, and uh, also, there were good reasons not doing it last week, I was like, f feeling not so good, you know, it, it was just, I had a feeling that something's missing, so back to normal again. So here we are again with the Andalusian Bull by La Flor Dominicana. <sighs> Guys, I don't know what to say, you know. Well, I mean the burn kind of corrected, you know. Still wavy, far away from being perfect, but I would like to declare it being okay. It was also okay. But right now there are two things that I don't like about it. A, the smoke output. It's not enough. I don't have the feeling that there is enough smoke coming through the cigar, you know. Uh, so it feels like it feels almost like that the, there is a filter or something in there so also the draw is okay there's not enough stuff coming through <laughs> I don't like that the 
the second thing is like the the flavors there is this creaminess and the sweetness um, but like so we're in the first third still towards the transition to the to the second third and that's not really not very not a whole lot of not a whole lot of transition is happening you know it's it's the aromas the, the flavors they are there but they are not changing a whole lot you know so it's I could imagine it's it's getting kind of boring over the time we'll see After the last review last year, uh, so the Andalusian Bull review, a lot of people were saying that they are pretty sure that they like changed the recipe, changed the plant um, somehow. Back in 2016, when that cigar was like the cigar of the year, uh, I didn't smoke it back then. But a lot of people saying back then it was a it was a phenomenal cigar, you know. And now that's the second chance, and it's still not a fantastic cigar. I would say right now it's an okay cigar, uh, but that's it. Ecuadorian wrapper the rest like the binder and the fillers coming from the Dominican Republic Also, your mouth is getting dry. And that's a. I had exactly the same thing with a couple of, let's say, cheap cigars. Or cheaper cigars, like budget sticks, you know, where you where you have the feeling that they're not taking like the top-notch tobacco that's available because it's a budget cigar, and I totally understand that. But now the feeling that I had with like the the not so good smoke output and. Uh, the flavors that are not changing a whole lot, plus the dryness in your mouth. And the ash is also flaky. So flaky ash and a not very good burn plus all the other things it's not I'm not impressed I'm <laughs> not impressed at all
this week I watched a series you probably maybe you already know it or at least you heard about it because it was like it's from 2000 end of 18 2000 though so somewhere between 2018 and 19 surviving R. Kelly never saw it of course it was very popular back then and uh, but I never watched it for whatever reason um, so but this week I think it has like it's like a mini series with six or eight episodes not quite sure right now but like I binged it in two days or so uh, And I was shocked. Not because that there is somebody who's like abusing um, girls, because we all know it's a fact that this is happening in the world <clears throat> I think I was shocked because I watch it and I realized then for for how long that thing was going on you know and obviously no one was like able or willing to stop that guy and I know of course the guys who were doing the documentation um, they had an intention uh, why they were doing it and of course showing everybody what, what kind of monster he is <clears throat> and it's always a good idea to do like your own research and see if everything that they were trying to show you in the documentation is really the truth um, but like doing all your homework and everything and watching that, that documentation and they were like there were so many facts I'm not talking about rumors or like uh, f uh, false uh, false statements or there's like and we're talking about facts you know as a matter of fact so many things happened over like 20 years you know um, more I mean this guy started like in the in the 80s you know doing that shit and there were so many people in the documentation like not only the the so-called survivors or the victims but also other people in his in his in his circle you know or people who worked with him or know who he is and obviously everybody knew and no one had the courage to like standing up and doing something I know it's like it's easy to say you know uh, after all that and no of course nobody knows what what he or she would have done back then in that situation you know but I always I always like think or put it the other way around you think of yourself that you would have done better like report him or stopping that situation stepping in or whatever of course nobody knows what really would have happened <clears throat> but like taking a step back and watching all that 
and then see that people like were covering him uh, just because they don't they back then for whatever reason were not able to do something because they were like afraid of their job or I don't know man that's it's it was it's just the wrong thing you know it's just terribly wrong um, and it 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 makes you feel like wow what <laughs> that was like that was like crazy and i remember that one scene his his older brother is in jail so they interviewed him and maybe that was for me the most shocking moment you know like he said i don't know what's the big deal we all have preferences for me example that's what his brother said me for example i like older women older women and he likes like younger women so what's the big deal we all have preferences i don't see a problem and i i saw that and i was just thinking what the fuck are you are you crazy we're not talking about preferences that maybe when you're a grown-up man that you like older women okay you like younger women okay but we we are talking about girls that all were like 14 15 that just just talking about that makes you feeling sick you know and this guy is just sit, his brother sitting there with that we all have preferences and then you realize okay no wonder that he was able to do all that things when he has like people in his in his circle that are just thinking that's absolutely okay <sighs> crazy fucking crazy maybe another point is like <coughs> when when you are a father the first thing I, I like I, I'm thinking about is what would have happened if, if that happened to my one of my daughters you know because when you are a father that's the first thing you that's popping into your mind you know maybe it's different if you have no kids maybe then you have also uh, I'm not saying that like people that have no kids thinking that it's the right thing to do I'm not saying that but maybe they have a different feeling then you know because they're coming from a different point of view you know um, but being a father myself and just thinking about that man I would I would kill that motherfucker you know of course the consequence then would, would I don't know if I would like would be able to like hold myself back if I would just like snap you know I think I don't know um I was there was a like a there was like a shocking documentation man and it was on it was shocking and it was like a disappointment a disappointment um disappointing for a couple of reasons you know a that something like this happens B like this guy is doing it C watching all the other people around him that are just still like trying to justify things you know or talking their way out of of that you know well Oh, 
almost reaching the the first band here and still and I don't know thinking back to my original review Cigar of the Year 2016? I don't think so. Like most of the cigars that I have in my humidor, they're way better. Way better. <clears throat> it's, it's a boring cigar. So I have to say, like the smoke output is getting a little bit better, a little bit better. Not to a level that I really like, but better. At least the wrapper didn't split. Or corrected. I think, uh, if I remember right, that what that happened was the last Andalusian bull I smoked. So at least that's okay. I'm saying right now, don't know what will happen um, in the last third, but up to now, it's the wrapper is like okay, but still burn always wavy. Ash always flaky. Let me see if I can get that ash here from the uh, like look. That's how the ash looks. It's totally flaky and uh, it's not very nice, really. The best thing about it, uh, about that whole thing, is the beer. <laughs> the beer is very good. The cigar nut. hear a lot of information about that beer I'm not like repeat all that but you know we Germans we are at least we are like popular for, for a few things uh, Autobahn of course <laughs> or scars and the beer uh, that's what we can do beer Testing shit, man. Like it. Also, I'm not the biggest beer fan, you know, but that's a good beer. Uh, let's see if I can remove, like here, the this. over here because we reached it almost And another good news is um, that my favorite uh, cigar lounge, Frankfurt Downtown, David's flagship store, will open up again 
I think in two weeks or so. Guys, I cannot tell you how happy I am that this lounge is opening up again. Jesus Christ, that's just another part of like going back to normal, you know. Uh, because that place is, is playing really an important role in my everyday routine, you know. And it was closed for so long. And when that thing opens up again, guys, I'm telling you, I will be the first dude who's showing up there. <laughs> Sitting there enjoying my cigar in the lounge, like drinking a good coffee and just, man. Guys, so I was talking about my the last week and what we are about to do. Uh, Wednesday cigar talk. I have a very interesting thing. I I've, I probably said it in the last night owl, and then it did not happen. <laughs> now it will happen. What a nice little gadget that I will show you on Wednesday. Uh, and then a very good review on Friday. Uh, a cigar where a couple of people uh, were asking if I can do that. So I will be happy to, to smoke uh, that stick. So, and the Lusion Bull. Still not impressed. Still an okay cigar, like average, really average. Uh, okay. My friends, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks again, Daniel, my friend, for the cigars. Really enjoyed. I will. I will enjoy every single stick. And I already told you on Instagram how grateful uh, I am and everything. Was well, just a cool move. Thanks a lot, um, guys. Enjoy a good cigar. Enjoy life. Most importantly, stay safe and stay healthy. And I hope to see you around and smoke a spot. Good night. Mm -hmm.